G. Atherton, the great badass, sent this enormous drop, exploded. He's in the hospital with a fractured skull, etc. So what I did was I went to one of the I went to the Vital MTB feed. Um, it came across on Instagram. I'm just gonna read what I wrote because otherwise I get too emotional and it's gonna go on forever. This is a long term discussion that I want us to have. So I just wrote on there. I said. Um, among all the, yeah, you're a badass, yeah, some people saying, dude, what are you doing? Assess yourself. But most people going, yeah, you'll be back in no time, you know? I said, it's time to address the underlying issues. And then someone said, well, what do you mean? And then I said, it's right here, it's right here. Um, and I said, his need to do this sort of thing. He had a huge crash in 2021 and seems to be back at the same type of behaviors. Pursuing greatness is great. Totally. But there comes a time to move on. Very few men at his level have the strength to release the identity they forged over their entire lives. The true badass... The true, real spirit warrior badass. Next level. Right? Says thank you to that part of his life. Goes through the suffering of losing that. And then builds a new identity. My opinion. That's what I wrote. And of course people are like, some people like, are like, dude, I disagree. To which I say, great, you have that right. Um, then an industry guy comes on and, um, um, I'm just going to use his name. This is all public. Um, stick man, Craig Glassball. He currently is, is at SRAM at a kind of a high level business development kind of marketing. I think vibe. He was at TLD. Um, he's the husband of the great Lee Donovan, um, racer. Um, he and I wrote, we all wrote 30 years ago. So Stickman says, um, to, he says, he says, it is not your life or your athletic pursuits. So why pontificate about what G or any, all caps, athlete chooses to do with their life? Let's just let G, let's just wish G a speedy recovery and not tell him what should, he should be doing, what he should not be doing. Unreal man. Okay. Yep. You have a right to say that. Totally. Of course, there's business reasons for what he's doing, too. But I'll leave that out. Then he said, a couple minutes later, Also, G-Man is lying in a hospital with skull fractures and broken vertebrae. And you have the nerve to come on here preaching this nonsense. Okay, Stick. Um, I honor your perspective. Great. You have every right to have that opinion. That's, that's great. This is a discussion. This is a discussion that we need to have. So um, here's what I wrote back in the post. I said, hi, Stick. It's great to hear from you. Here are some thoughts. One, everyone who profits from this sort of spectacle, includes like, including brands like, say, SRAM, is part of the engine that drives this behavior. If they care about the safety of the riders and the health of the culture, there's a conflict of interest here. Right? If you're being paid by this behavior, your opinions are a hair suspect, okay? Two, this sort of question needs to be asked. Even if it doesn't apply directly to G, I think it does, there are many riders out there who are unwilling or unable to stop their self-destructive, addictive riding behaviors. I was one of those people for long enough to know what that means. I've been here. Three. The bro edict to go bigger and badder is affecting regular people in negative ways. I've taught 11,000 people so far. 11,000. And I see how this is hurting psyches and bodies. Guys cannot be happy with their within their own capacities. Partly because... The industry is positioning extreme bro NAR as the standard. This will hurt the industry over the long term. It will. Okay. Four. Me encouraging G 
to assess why he is doing what he is, does shows more care for him than telling him, yeah, bro, do it some more and entertain me. I'm showing more concern and more care, and I'm taking a risk for my reputation and, and role in the industry. I'm going to say that again. Me encouraging G to just ask himself, why am I doing what I do? Shores more care for him than tell him, yeah, bro, you're a badass. Do it some more and entertain me. If his habit, if he had a habit of walking through plate glass windows and he did it again, what would we be telling him? What would we tell the guy? And then I bring it around, back around. Stick, comma. You've been long been a respected leader in this world. Heck, I remember riding with the San Juan Trail with you and Lee, his wife, in 1993. That's 30 years in this business. I encourage you to consider these notions. And then I've closed with this. Uh, with love and respect for this sport and the humans who enjoy it, Lee. I'm just asking the questions. I'm assessing this. And, and I'm going to be doing this more and more. I can see, right? It's time to have these discussions. So there, there it is, right? Well, it's a discussion. There's no edict here. I'm not proselytizing. I'm saying, look, I've been through a similar cycle. Again, G's no Lee McCormack. He never will be. And I'm no G Atherton. I never will be. But we're both men. We're both humans. And we all, all of us, share very common patterns and cycles in our lives. So I'm encouraging us to, to look at why we arrive. Assess what we want out of it. When we've gotten that, change. Move on. I'm not telling you not to ride. I'm not telling you not to pursue what makes you happy. I'm just asking us all to kind of be aware of what and why. So I'm going to put it to y'all. What do you think? Where does this bring up for you? Hmm.